Hey everyone, welcome to the channel and I hope you're all doing well. In today's video, we'll be going over how to deploy your first AWS Lambda function using the serverless application framework, as well as GitHub Actions. So hopefully you'll find this video useful. And of course, if you do, and you wanna see more videos just like this one, please do consider hitting that like and subscribe button as it really helps out the channel an incredible amount. Now let's dive right in. So it's important to note that the serverless framework we'll be using here is actually different from the concept of serverless. This framework is a tool that helps developers deploy serverless applications to the cloud. It's also a vendor agnostic framework, so it supports different cloud providers. But in this video, we'll only be using with AWS. And if you take a look here at their documentation page, you can see all the cloud providers that it currently supports. And also, if you don't know or haven't used GitHub Actions before, basically it's a continuous integration slash delivery platform directly integrated and provided by GitHub. What that means is that it allows you to, for example, run your linter or run your test and ultimately deploy your application to where you want it to be. Awesome, so now let's get started. The first thing you wanna do is head over to your AWS management console and uh, search up IAM, which stands for Identity and Access Management. And we'll click users and we're gonna go ahead and create a new user. And what this user will do is that it will allow us to execute and deploy our Lambda function. So we'll just call it Lambda user. Um, and we will only need programmatic access because we're going to be deploying to AWS using GitHub Actions, um, which is a programmatic and serverless, sorry, and the serverless framework, which is only requires programmatic access. So we'll check that and we'll go to permissions. So we can go ahead and also create a, uh, um, sorry, an IAM group, a user group, um, and we'll call this the Lambda group, which will hold our Lambda user. And we actually want to go ahead and add a few policies that have already been created for us by AWS. And these include AWS Lambda full access. So we'll search that up and check it off. And this one gives us full access to AWS Lambda, the service. And we'll also get um, search up IAM full access, which gives us full access to identity and access management, which is what we are currently on. And we also want access to CloudWatch logs which is a logging service so that we can check um, whether our Lambda function is working. And we also want AWS Lambda role, which basically grants us grants this specific user or any user in this Lambda group uh, permissions to invoke the Lambda. And lastly, we also want AWS cloud formation full access. And this last policy basically gives um, our user full access to deploy things to the to AWS Cloud. And CloudFormation is the tool that AWS provides for us to deploy resources to their cloud to the cloud service. So we're gonna go ahead and click Create Group once we've checked all those off. And awesome, now it's created. And we'll just click Next Tags. We don't actually need any tags as they are optional. And we'll just check everything, everything's correct. And we'll click Create User. Awesome, so now that our user is created, this is the only time and the last time that you'll be able to see the credentials that we need here, which includes the AWS access key ID and the AWS secret access key. So we're gonna go ahead and actually copy these over. And the first thing we wanna do is actually create a repo. So I've already done that. I'm gonna go into settings um, and we're gonna insert these secrets into the repo. So we'll click new repository secret and I'm gonna type in, I'm just gonna call this AWS access key ID. And I believe I copied it right, yeah, this is the key ID. So we'll add secret. And we'll create a new secret for, oops, should be capitalized. Um, this is just a convention I follow. Uh, secret access, ooh, I did not spell that right. Okay, secret access key, and we'll copy this over. And awesome, okay, now it's stored in our repo. And once I refresh the page, this will no longer be here. So we're gonna, we're gonna close this. And there we go. Now all our secrets are loaded and we can begin coding our project. All right, so we can go ahead and head over to our favorite IDE. Um, in this case, we'll just be using VS Code. And once that's open, we can open a project directory. We'll just call it basis serverless Lambda here. And then we'll open up a terminal CD into this directory. And we'll go ahead and actually install the serverless framework. You can, and you can do this uh, using npm or yarn, and we'll install it globally. Um, this is a command that you would run, but since I've already installed it, I will not run it again. Um, and what this does is this gives us access to the serverless CLI, which actually allows us to run 
a command that helps us install boilerplate files um, that will get us started right away. So we can run serverless create dash dash template um, AWS dash Node.js. And this will give us the some boilerplate templates and code um, for deploying Node.js Lambda functions to AWS. And now it's done. So this, as you can see here, it creates three files, a git ignore, our Lambda handler file, and the serverless.yaml file. And basically, this is the main file that we'll, that we'll be using to configure what resources we need and where which cloud provider we'll be deploying to. Um, anyway, so first things first, we'll create a source folder, um, and then we'll move our handler.js file inside just for the sake of project structure. So, um, sorry, just give it a second. It's taking a while. Okay, awesome. So once it's moved inside, um, we can go ahead and uh, check out the serverless.yaml file. So most of this file, most of this content, we don't actually need, as you can see here. It's mostly comments. Um, so we'll comment that out and keep it simple. And the first uncommented line is the service field, and this basically specifies the name of the serverless service that we want to uh, deploy. And by default, it just takes the name of the project directory. So basically, it's basic serverless lambda, and we don't need the organization here. Um, we also don't need to specify the framework, so we can comment, remove that. Um, the next important thing is the provider, and this specifies the cloud provider that we are going to deploy to. In this case, it'll be AWS, and the runtime will be the runtime of the language and what version um, that we're going to be using. So the latest version of Node.js supported it by AWS, current, AWS Lambda currently is actually Node.js 12.x, so that is what we will specify. And we can also actually specify um, the region on, on which we want to have our service be available mostly for. And basically what this means is that, for example, if you want your service to, um, to respond quicker to, for example, where you're currently located or any other particular location, you may wish to change the data center or region uh, specified here so that it may respond quicker to requests. So you can actually go to the AWS Management Console and click under here, and you can check all the regions that are available. So for the sake of the tutorial, we'll just use US West 1, which is around California. Um, so we'll change that there and we'll hit save. Um, we don't actually need any Lambda IM roles here. Um, so we'll comment that out. And we also don't need any of this. So we'll leave that all out um, and comment it. Awesome. So as you can see here, it actually boils down to really simple, only a few lines, and we can actually deploy this. Um, and the last thing here is actually the most important part, which is the functions. And it specifies specifically what functions we want to deploy to AWS and where they are located in terms of our project. So as you can see here, in the boilerplate code uh, provided, the function handler name is called hello. And and that is why it's also called hello here and it's referenced as hello in the path. Um, but we do need to change this path because we moved the handler.js file into our source folder. So we'll go ahead and change that to source slash handler dot hello. So right now it's correct. Um, hello might not be the best one, best function name. So we'll change this to uh, generate random number because this function will eventually help us generate a random number um, just to keep things simple. And there we go, we can hit save. And we'll just insert um, the the code. So we'll go ahead and create a random number, uh, preferably an integer, math.random times 100. And we'll also do a quick log so we can see in CloudWatch. So this, the uh, random generated integer is. And once that is done, we can also return it. Awesome. And we actually don't need async here, so I'm just going to comment that out. All right, so our code is actually done now. So the next thing we want to do is to actually deploy this serverless service to the AWS cloud. And there are two options that we can do. We can actually run serverless deploy the command from our terminal um, and deploy that to the to AWS. But that will require us to run the command every single time. Um, and we want to keep things automated. So we'll go, we won't follow that approach for this tutorial, and we'll go ahead and use GitHub Actions. So to do so, we want to first go to the root uh, root path of our project structure, and we'll go ahead and type in .github for a new folder name, and we'll create a nested folder under that called workflows. And basically, GitHub will automatically read from uh, read any files from here, and it will, and if you specify in the correct format, GitHub Actions will automatically run for you to do what you have specified. So we'll go ahead and create a file called main.yaml, and this will help us run 
um, our action on the main branch. Um, I actually need to change the branch name here, so I'm gonna do that real quick. Um, okay, I need to commit and then I'll change it. So we'll do that in a bit. But as for GitHub Actions, um, there's a lot of templates online that you can follow, and we'll go ahead and actually follow one of the ones provided by the serverless GitHub Action. Um, so without going into too much detail, we'll just go ahead and quickly copy this um, for the sake of brevity, and we'll quickly cover what these mean uh, without going into too much detail. So the first field is called the name, and basically this is just going to be the name of the action, so we'll just call it deploy lambda, and this is specifying which branches um, you want to trigger this action when you push to this branch. So we have a branch called which we'll call main in a bit, so we'll call it main here. Um, and here it specifies a list of jobs that you want it to run. Um, and this is the name of the first job. Uh, we'll just call it deploy. Um, we'll leave it as that. Again, the name is specified here again. Um, and this will tell you, this specifies which machine or which type of machine that you will be running on. Uh, Ubuntu Linux will be the cheapest option available on GitHub Actions, so we'll keep it as that. Um, again, node version, so we'll keep it as that, 12.x. And here, this, actually, this, this line here will check out into our project structure. So that's important that we have it there. So we'll keep it as that. And the node version, again, it's there. Um, we don't actually have any, uh, or a package.json, or any dependencies that we need to install. So we can remove that. And that is pretty much it. All right, and the last step is actually the serverless deploy. Um, and this is the key part. This actually uses the serverless um, GitHub action. So. If you recall from the beginning of the tutorial, we created the secrets AWS access key ID and AWS secret access key. And this is where we will be accessing it. Um, so we can comment that one out. And basically, once we have, once we uh, push this to the main branch, GitHub Actions will automatically detect those secrets and read them and fill them in here. And it will run serverless deploy behind the scenes for us. And then that will deploy our Lambda function to the AWS cloud automatically. And this is really great because you don't have to run service deploy manually every time. You just need to commit and push to master or the main branch directly. So um, once that is set up, we'll go ahead and actually commit it. So we'll stage everything and we'll write initial commit. And this is where we'll actually change the name of the branch. So, all right. And then we'll do push origin main. All right, so once that is pushed, we can actually head over to our project and we'll see if the code is up. And awesome, so as you can see, it's here and you see this yellow dot, which means that it's actually building. So this is our GitHub action, deploy Lambda, as we have specified earlier in the main.yaml file. As you can see here, it's just building and setting up all the resources that it needs to build and run the commands that we have specified. So I'm gonna let it build here and we'll come back and right when the build finishes. So as you can see, the job finally completed. Um, all the steps of the jobs are finished and our Lambda function should be deployed to the AWS cloud. So we can actually head over to the AWS management console again and we'll type in, um, sorry, not AWS, we'll type in Lambda uh, and we'll just check if it, the function is actually deployed. And make sure that we are actually in the correct region. So as right now, we can see that no function uh, exists here. Um, so one important thing is to check out um, into the correct region um, that we have deployed a Lambda function, which would be US West 1 in this tutorial. Um, so we'll click that. Um, and awesome. So as you can see here, our function is right here with the correct configuration things that we have specified in our serverless.yaml file. And if we go ahead and just click, um, we'll click test, um, just test event. Right now it's irrelevant. We'll hit test. And if we take a look at the logs, we'll be able to see um, the log that we have written. So we give it a second to load. Okay, awesome. As you can see, we see log, one log stream and in the message we see the random generated integer is two as we have written. And you can also see here, since our code is really short, um, the exact code that is written for a function. And that is pretty much it in terms of the deployment side. Um, one other important thing that we can specify in uh, the serverless.yaml file is also the timeout and the amount of memory. So right now it's configured at one gigabyte, so like a thousand megabytes and six seconds, but for the sake of deploying a function that just generates a random number 
one gigabyte of RAM is far too much. So we're gonna actually change that right now. So we'll go ahead back into our code. In the serverless.yaml file, we will uh, include a, diff a, a few additional fields for our Lambda handler. Um, namely, it will be timeout. Um, we'll just give it six seconds enough, but for the sake of changing it, we'll just do 60, and this will be in seconds. And we'll also do configure the memory size. Uh, the lowest that we can actually configure is mega is 128 megabytes, and the units is also megabytes, so we'll keep it as 128. And once this has been deployed and the job has completed, um, we will see that the Lambda function will use 128. So I'm going to go ahead and commit this, and we will... We'll come back right when the job completes. Okay, great. So the job is completed here. As you can see here, our latest commit is just a dot. Um, we click into it. Um, we can see all the steps that have been checked off and have been completed. So we'll go back here and refresh the page of our Lambda function. And we should be able to see that the resources allocated for this function have now been updated, as well as the timeout. So we'll just scroll down. As you can see here, has been allocated to, or sorry, changed to one minute, which is 60 seconds, and 128 gig megabytes of memory. Um, so that's pretty much it um, in terms of like changing the fields that you might find important or frequently updated in terms of updating your Lambda function. Um, one last thing to note is that uh, the name of the function actually is basic serverless Lambda dev hello. And the reason why it's named like this is that this is actually the stage, so dev is the stage that we have specified, and hello, um, I realized I actually forgot to change it here. So serverless will allow you to actually specify any name you want here. Um, I realized I forgot to change it here to generate random number. I probably should have done that earlier. Um, in terms of the stage, we have specified as a dev development stage here. You can change it to whatever stage you want, um, and your Lambda function will be named uh, respectively. Uh, ideally, the stage will represent, like for example, the environment that you're deploying your Lambda function to. Maybe it's like a development, a QA, or maybe a production environment, and you would then you would change it as such. For example, production, um, and then your name, the name of the layer Lambda function would then be basic serverless Lambda uh, dash prod dash generate random number. Um, but yeah, I realized I forgot to do that earlier, but that is pretty much the last thing we will be covering. And yeah, anyways, of course, if you learned something or found this video helpful, please do consider hitting that like and subscribe button again down below as it really helps out the channel and series. And as always, I hope you're all staying happy and well out there. But for now, I'll see you in the next video.